Hey, it's Chris. Today, we're gonna to be exploring some of the new iPadOS 15 features that I think can help you be more productive. Now, this could be kind of an in-depth video, so be prepared to hang out for a little bit and be on the lookout for some cool tips scattered throughout. Now, this video is gonna be pretty comprehensive, but just so you know what to expect, I'm not gonna be talking about Quick Notes, the new features in Apple Notes, the new features in Reminders, or Universal Control in this video, because I feel like those topics actually deserve their own videos. All right, first things first, let's talk about multitasking. There's a variety of new features here that are gonna upgrade your multitasking experience experience, or in my case, my monotasking experience, because I'm working on one thing, but within multiple apps, that's how I'm usually productive. And the first thing to know is we've got these three dots that appear at the top of any app that you have open. So here I've got two apps open in split screen. I can touch on those dots and I'll get some options. That's the new multitasking menu. There's three options here, full screen, split screen, or slide over. The main benefit of this is that you don't have to guess what your options are. It puts everything right in front of your face. So I've got Apple Music loaded up here and let's say I want to open up something else. What I'm going to do is hit the split view button there and it's going to reveal the desktop and I am going to open up Safari right next to it. All right, so now I've got a website open on one side and I've got Apple Music open on the other. But then maybe I decide, you know what? I need to focus full screen on this website. So I'm gonna stick Apple Music over in Slide Over. Well, I pop open that menu and stash it into Slide Over. So it's there, it's just hanging out and I can pull it back over if I want to and see what else I've got loaded up in my Slide Over just like that. Now that's pretty straightforward. We had those features before, but now they become easier to use. Something that's new though is the new shelf feature. So let me open up Safari here and you're gonna see at the bottom, I have three different windows of Safari open. And in this shelf space, it's showing me all of those without me having to go tap on Safari, hold it and say, show all windows. In the past, that's how you'd see all the instances or windows that were open for any given app. Now it just appears for you if you have more than one instance right at the bottom of that app. Now, if you start interacting with the screen, that shelf's gonna disappear. And if I tap on the menu there, it's gonna reappear. And then of course, I can just grab something out of that shelf and move it into a slide over view. Now, the app switcher interface, which you're familiar with because you take three fingers and you swipe up and pause, and then you see all your open windows. This has gotten a nice improvement as well. So now I can open up app switcher and I can drag something onto another window and automatically open up a split view. And what's really cool is that you can also put things into slide over from this screen now as well. So I can take Apple Notes out of split view and then I can take it and put it into split view from right there. One thing that's new is the ability to center an app, kind of give you a better preview, an enhanced preview of certain contents. So here I am in Apple Notes, and if I tap and hold here and then say open a new window, you can see that it's centered that particular note, and it's kind of giving me a nice preview there that I can interact with and then close. That center window feature is available right now in Mail, Notes, and Messages, but there's an API out there so that developers can begin integrating that into their apps as well. One thing that I'm really excited has made its way from the iPhone to the iPad is the app library. So that's the space that's going to automatically organize all of your apps into buckets like recently added, productivity, utilities, creativity, etc. But what I really like from a productivity standpoint is that I could be in any app and get to that app library right off of the dock. Basically, that gives me very quick access to everything on the iPad with just a tap. So if you're anywhere where you're gonna be editing text, you can see I've tapped and my cursor is right inside this note, then you're gonna get this preview bar that shows up on the bottom. We're all used to that. With this more compact design, you're definitely gonna be able to see more of the screen, but you can also tap on it and drag it around and move it out of the way. You can minimize it and move it, and this is very much like you could do with the Apple Pencil toolbar. And one thing I just have to point out, I love that if you try to move the cursor now, you actually get this zoom in over the cursor so you can actually see exactly where you're putting it. That had gone away, and I'm really glad that it's made a return. Now, let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. And personally, this might be my favorite thing that I'm gonna be talking about in this particular video. So just like before, if you hold down the command key, you're gonna be able to see what keyboard shortcuts exist on a per app basis. So this has a whole new redesign. It looks a little bit different. As you can see, it says file, edit, view, history, bookmarks, etc. And that should remind you of something it should remind you of the Mac menu bar. A couple things to point out now, if you hold down the command key and this new contextual menu pops up, you don't have to keep holding the key down, it will stay up until you're done with it. 
You can use your finger to scroll around or you can hit the shortcuts here to see what's available. And there's even a search bar. But here's a good tip for you. These shortcuts are not just for reference. They're not just for looking at, they're actually interactive. So you can tap on it and perform an action. But even cooler, and this is what I'm really, really excited about. You can hold down the globe key now, even on the home screen, and pull up a system-wide, not just an app-specific, but a system-wide shortcuts menu, kind of a cheat sheet for everything that you can activate using an external keyboard. So there are some cool system-wide functions here. For instance, show the dock or create a quick note without using your Apple Pencil. You can open up the notification or the control center. And then on top of that, over to the right, we also have some multitasking features that we can activate using this globe key now. So you can interact with and control a whole bunch of stuff now without ever having to take your hands off the keyboard. So here's a really practical use case. For example, if I'm in an app that has a text field and I don't want to have to take my finger and tap into that text field, I can just hit tab now. And you can see that it opens up the search box there without me having to navigate to it myself. Now that doesn't work in every app yet. It's getting integrated into the Apple apps first. But again, this is a feature that's gonna require a little bit of developer adoption. But by the time you add all these cool little keyboard functions up, you're gonna end up shaving off just a little bit of extra time, being a little bit more efficient as you're getting your work done. And really, I think the real word there is convenience. All these things are just a little bit more convenient and little conveniences add up to big convenience. Now I did mention that I'm gonna hit Quick Notes and Apple Note features in a completely separate video because they deserve it. There's a lot there to unpack and explore and have fun with. But I do wanna point out that Apple Notes now lets you mix images and text. You can put an image in here and write on top of it, for instance, resize that image. This is something that people have been asking for for a really long time. Absolutely can't wait to tell you guys everything that I've learned about Quick Notes and Apple Notes. So this is just another reminder, make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss it. I will also just say that as Apple Notes gets more and more useful features, that core app alone makes having a paper-like screen protector worth it for me because that's where I use my Apple Pencil the most is in Apple Notes. All right, the next thing to talk about when it comes to productivity on the iPad will be the ability to now place widgets anywhere on your home screen. Now you can see on here, I've got a clock widget, a calendar widget. I've got the battery widget here so I can see my AirPods Max, my Apple Pencil, my iPad itself, the battery there. This is just nice stuff. You can think of a widget as a place to glance information or to take quick actions. Now, if you want to, you could actually build an entire page full of widgets. And the reason that this is a productivity enhancement in my mind is because I can take the new Apple Mail widget, I can put it next to a, a widget full of my Apple Notes or my shortcuts or my files. This is a new files app. It's kind of a shelf with a bunch of files that are all visible at once. And you can put your calendar, your reminders, all of these things together on a homepage or on multiple homepages, craft them how you want. And all of a sudden, you're saving a little bit of time by not having to dip into each of those apps to glance information or to take actions. Completely customizable productivity dashboard. That's what these widgets really mean to me. Something that's absolutely productivity related is the new focus feature. Now this doesn't just work on the iPad, it works across your all your Apple devices, your iPhone, your Mac, whatever. So set it up in one place and it will work across the ecosystem. So this is the focus setup area. It's in your settings app. And what it basically lets you do is match your devices to your mindset. So for instance, here's my work zone that I set up. I've selected one person that can break through and notify me about things, message me. And then just for this demo, I've also set up a handful of apps that can be used during this certain time of day. But then what's cool is I can get in here and set up the home screen so I can set up a custom page and I can choose one of the pages that I've already got set up here. And then, you know, at the end of the day, when you don't wanna work and you just wanna watch some YouTube or some Netflix or maybe play some Call of Duty, or whatever it is, then you can have a different home screen appear automatically. You'll notice here that notifications have been redesigned a little bit. So if I click on this stack, you can see things just kind of stack up, which is nice. But then you can also go into your notification settings and click on scheduled summary and choose either a time or a few times per day when you want to get a bundle of your less important notifications delivered to just kind of glance through at one time of the day. So they're not just pinging you all throughout the day, kind of getting in your way. One thing that I'm really liking is the ability to mute certain notifications or kinds of notifications. So for instance, we've all been in a big group text thread, right? 
and a lot of people are talking and it's not really related to you, but it keeps pinging, 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 distracting. Well, number one, if you haven't really responded in a while, Siri can just be like, hey, I'm gonna mute this for you or would you like me to mute this so it doesn't keep bugging you? That's one option or you can go in and manually just mute certain notifications. So that is gonna help protect your work zone or whatever zone you're in as well. All right, look at this. This is a screenshot I took off the Waterloo website because I like Waterloo, not sponsored, right? It's my favorite sparkling water at the moment. And we're gonna check out the new live text feature. So anytime you see any text within a photo that you've taken or even a screenshot like this or just anything graphical, you can just select the text within it. You can copy it, you can paste it, you can drag it into another app. Uh, you can translate it. Even this text, that's not just straight, it's kind of in an arc, I can grab that. Watch, I've got my note open on the right. I've got that same image on the left. And let me go ahead and tap on that Waterloo there and drag it over and attach it to a node. I can come over here and I can get black cherry, that's the flavor. I can drag that over and it's created another child node there. Wow, this is something that I've been using a lot, this workflow right here to quickly build an outline. Something that's pretty cool and it applies across the board, it's not just for the iPad, but it's worth thinking about in, in the context of productivity is a few of the Siri enhancements. Text biz test phone. Hey, how's it going? Tell them I will see you later. It contextually understood that because I had a contact up on the screen, in this case, biz test phone, that's just my other phone, I didn't have to say, you know, text biz test phone. I just said them and it understood what I was talking about. All right, in this section, we're gonna talk about just some random upgrades. And the first thing I wanna mention is that you can now continuously dictate, basically forever. Whereas before it was capped off, there was a limit. I think it was maybe 60 seconds. Now you can just sit there and talk and talk and talk and you're not gonna be interrupted. And I just wanna point out that we do have a redesigned shortcut editor, so you can now get some action suggestions to help you complete those shortcuts if you're not really sure what you should be doing. Because let's face it, we're not Matt Casanelli, most of us, and we don't know what we're doing when it comes to shortcuts. So anything that can help and make this a little bit more usable and approachable for the average everyday person is gonna be very welcome. And that's what we got. Something else that I'm gonna really appreciate is the ability to translate stuff right on the iPad. So no more having to open up translate.google.com, copying and pasting stuff into there. This is way more straightforward. So here, just as an example, I am on the Japanese version of the Porsche website. I'm seeing stuff I don't understand all over the place. And what I can do is come in here and highlight some of that and say translate right there. And now I understand. There's some new stuff in voice memos, if you can believe it, that is actually worth mentioning. So if you were recording something and uh, there was a big long pause, sometimes I record a meeting and people are typing or something for like five minutes and then they start talking again. Well, you can automatically trim out those big silent spaces, which is really nice. Woo, all right, that's enough for this video. Hopefully I pointed out some stuff that you haven't seen elsewhere. You maybe picked up a new tip or two, or you're just like, wow, I can't wait to try it out. So the public beta is out now. You can go check it out. Here's some things that you can try. Let me know if this video was interesting, uh, what you got out of it, and please hit subscribe so you don't miss the stuff coming up. The last thing I wanna say is if you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, do it. It's another way where we can just chill, hang out. It's kind of a hangout session. Talk about what's new in the world of Apple, just daily tech, all kinds of stuff. Sometimes it gets philosophical. Uh, you can see there's a lot of five-star ratings and I'd love to have you join me there as well. It's linked up. It's the Hey, It's Chris podcast and I'll look forward to talking with you there. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.